The following game has been rated E for everyone by the ESRB, and it has no listed restrictions. That means that the content in the game should be appropriate for anyone aged 6 and up. Furthermore, this game is also listed as early access. That means that this game is not yet completed. So what you will see in the following video may not be reflective of the final product. You have been warned. Greetings and salutations. I am Outlier, and I bid you welcome uh, to this channel. Joining me today is, of course, my usual co-hosts, Snowball and Wolf. And today, we're returning back to Hard Space Ship Breaker. So the premise of Hard Space Ship Breaker is that you serve the role of an orbital salvage engineer uh, in a futuristic Earth-like setting where I guess massive inflation and uh, economic, uh, I don't want to say suppression, but um, I guess stalling is a better word, but basically the economy is slowed down, people can't find work, and uh, a lot of people can't pay their bills. Enter a massive mega corporation known as Lynx Corp, who have an opening for an orbital salvage engineer up on a uh, orbital station known as Morgan Station. Now, I don't know if you applied for the job or if uh, Lynx Corp gave you the job through some sort of roulette or a lottery system, uh, but you basically start as an orbital salvage engineer. And while that may seem like an interesting job and a fun job, uh, Lynx Corp is a corporation, true to heart, and they expect to make a profit in all things. That includes any expenses incurred getting you up into orbit to do their job for them. And throughout the breakdown of all the assorted costs and uh, all that fun stuff, you end up having to pay them back a debt of over one billion two hundred and fifty million well credits i think it's still called they may be it may have switched over to dollars but originally uh it was credits and basically you have to work for your employer to pay off the debt and you pay off the debt by uh selecting various derelict abandoned and slash or uh ships that can no longer serve their purpose Yes, that could also be the case. Although, if that's a class of ships, it's not in the game yet. Uh, and you basically take apart the various uh, ships, uh, file all the various components away to the various collection areas, and um, at which point, at the end of the day, uh, you get assessed a profit based off of how much you stored correctly, how much uh, was stored incorrectly, how much got destroyed, and uh, that's weighed against your current debt. And I would assume eventually uh, you manage to pay off the debt, at which point I would assume either the game ends or it goes into some sort of free play mode. 
Uh, to be fair, I haven't actually gotten to that point yet. I don't play this game that often, uh, that quickly, to actually get most of the debt gone. The closest I ever got was back when it was still just a billion credits in debt. I believe I cleared uh, at least 200 million. I can't be 100% certain. Well, that is a very good question. The reason why the debt was different is because they basically changed the opening of the game. Originally, it was just you showed up with a billion credits worth of debt, and you have to work it off. This time now, there's a whole new introduction sequence where they break down everything that uh, uh, goes into the debt and uh, all that fun stuff, and you're assessed a uh, debt that's $250 million and change more than what it originally was. Now that too is an easily answerable question. The reason why they changed the opening is because the developers of this game are still making the game. This game is still flagged as being part of Steam's early access program, and while there is enough of the game to play and make videos of, uh, it is still in the development process and not completely finished or balanced, or I think the term is optimized, although it does run relatively well. At least for on my setup, and you know, if my setup for both video game playing and uh, video making was, it was equated to a starship, uh, I would figure my starship would be a bunch of just random parts just duct taped together. But that's a joke about my personal life, and uh, being a hermit, I don't like sharing all that much, so let's proceed on. So as I said, this game is in early access, and they are constantly updating the game, changing things around, adding new things, getting rid of old things, rebalancing stuff. And uh, while I don't expect the main premise of the game to change dramatically, I should point out that everything you see in this video may not actually reflect the final product of uh, the game when it finally finishes. Uh, but even though it's still in an unfinished state, I enjoy playing what's there, and, uh, you no, know, I figured I might as well share that with you. Uh, because for some reason, I figure that's uh, an amusing thing to do. I'm weird like that. Uh, but we're not here to talk about me, we're here to play a game. And as such, this game is of course made by... Thank you again. And uh, that being said, let us begin. Okay, so I would say this is the hab, but I don't think we've seen the hab just yet. Uh, I am still in the early process. I'm still in the early stages of the uh, new opening for the game. Uh, current debt still is one billion two hundred fifty million three hundred ninety-three thousand seven hundred ninety-three uh, dollars and forty-two cents. So I guess they did change it to dollars from credits. And I have acquired 228 Lynx tokens, which is a uh, in-company currency, which is used to buy extra little knickknacks and upgrades for my equipment, which I'm so new and uh, fresh off the uh, atmospheric shuttle, I don't even have access to yet. So I can look at messages, and I believe I've already read all of these, but uh, the most recent one basically talks about the Mackerel, which is the main ship I'm basically taking apart at this point. As far as I know, it's still just three vessels, the Mackerel, the Javelin, and the Gecko, and various other extra messages. And, uh, for certification purposes, I'm still in basic training. I'm guessing at Tier 4 uh, is when I basically, well, the training reels basically come off uh, and looks like I'll get access to the tether module for the grapple which should make life definitely easier and uh, the Xeno lab variant of the mackle which uh, is actually new and I've never touched before gets unlocked but I have to get to 
uh, rank four in order to get access to that. So uh, there's not much else to do. I mean, there are a couple stickers available, but uh, you know, can't really see that from my perspective. So uh, while they're interesting to collect, uh, I don't really much pay attention to them. But uh, so the only other thing left to do is start the shift. And while I did not have a ship, at least much of a ship left when I finished the last episode, I should point out I haven't really played between this episode now because we're in the middle of the story and unlike last time I don't want to skip over everything. When I was playing in between episodes they discussed the history of the mackerel slightly and uh, I didn't film that so it got missed. Much in the similar ways like after one major update they talked about the uh, FTL rail gates and they saw one firing but it happened mid shift and I was uh, waist deep in a mackerel taking it apart so I didn't get to see anything. I guess fair is fair. Anyway so let's view the ship catalog and I have access to two grades of ship right now. The basic training vessels I guess and uh, no I do not want to claim that. I do not want to claim that. And uh, well the tier two ones which are a little have a bunch more stuff that other than the basic training stuff so the training vessels are basically the outer hull and maybe a few little extra knickknacks to play with uh the grade two ones are basically almost functioning ships uh, it doesn't look like they have any core systems yet so it's just basically added extra knickknacks and stuff uh there does appear to be a grade two fire warning a grade one Freeze warning, a grade 1 electrical warning, and a grade 3, I'm not quite certain what that is, but I'm assuming that's radiation, which I believe is the new uh, hazard uh, with this update. But I'm looking at the total values, and it looks like the, costest, the caustic charon has the highest total value out of all four of these ships. Granted, the uh, total value difference isn't all that much, but... You know, a few thousand here or there right now probably is, uh, well, the difference between one extra shift and uh, not. So, let's take the Caustic Charon. Alright, I'm assuming that little printout thing is the Bill of Salvage, which doesn't technically exist, and it looks like I'm running low on fuel, so... Gunner, it is my distinct honor and privilege to introduce you to the rest of the crew in our sector today. Sound off, everyone. Hey, Rook. Name's Lou. I was the worm until you showed up, so thank you. <laughs> now I get to do the hazing. Come on, Lou. What are you talking about? We don't do that. Welcome aboard and don't listen to her. I'm Dee Dee. Okay. I'm Kaiser. Uh, Kai? I think your mic's still messed up. Oh, uh, can you hear this? How about now? Better. Ah, hey. I'm Kaito. Kai. Mike's still busted, huh? Yeah, still waiting on the wreck to get a boot. Heaven forbid they give us functional gear. <laughs> All right, Lou, I'm sure they're working on it as fast as they can. Anyway, Cutter, I've just added you to the official sector comms channel. It gets lonely out here, so don't hesitate to check in with each other from time to time. All right, that's enough chin wagon. Let's get back to it. Talk to you soon, Cutter. We were out. Goodbye. Bye. Later, Rick. Okay, so they added a few new people. Weaver is not new. Uh, in fact, Weaver is probably the only character that uh, has been around since, well, I started playing. Uh, the other three people are new. Alright, so let's just grab some extra fuel. Because apparently, fuel did not recharge between last shift and now. I mean, in the past... They always refueled everything. Welcome to Vendatron 9000. Thank you for your purchase. Have a nice day. O2 looks to be filled. Because I just bought more O2 and uh, the bar didn't change. So let's get to the ship. Alright, I 
don't think I have access to the scanner just yet. So I can't really see inside the ship. Uh, but for right now, uh, normal job goes in the fact that I work from the outside in. And then front back. So since there's these three antennas on the top of the vessel, uh, they go first. Just rip those off, fire those into the barge, or the net as I like to call it. Salvage secured. Account credit applied. So I have my own names for everything, mostly because I don't remember what the official names originally were, or if they have any slang. Uh, I don't remember what those were. So the green thing at the very bottom is the barge, which uh, I like to call the net. That's where all the little nice little objects like antennas, seats, computers, all that fun stuff goes. The uh, On the side pieces, there's the uh, processor, which is the blue uh, hole in the wall. Uh, I like to call it the blue maw, and various materials need to go in there, mostly outer hull chunks and stuff that needs to be processed whereas the red one is known as the furnace or as I like to call it, the red mall uh, basically internal structural pieces and junk and glass and other trash goes in there and uh, there is a technically a fourth location for small objects it's basically your pockets so that's pretty much where I gotta dump everything And since I don't have access to tethers just yet, uh, I have to cut off the nacelles and just basically toss everything, well, push everything where I need it to go. Tethers do make my job easier, but, uh, well, tethers are for the actual cutters, and apparently I'm still in training. Which is what the term worm, I believe, was supposed to mean. So... There's that. Also, because I'm working on a standard shift, I have 15 minutes to take this vessel apart. Uh, otherwise, it has to go to another shift. So, there's all that fun stuff. And because this is a grade 2 vessel... I forgot what button turns on the flashlight. Uh, it doesn't look like anything's in atmosphere, so I don't need to worry about... Uh, venting the ship. I do have to yank off this door. Why not? Out of the way. Am I glad there's no reactor in here? That could get messy. Of course, in addition to having no reactor, there's also no thruster, so... Your I oxygen reserves are low. I think I'm actually running low no, on O2. Excess carbon dioxide can cause damage to Link's equipment. Okay, apparently I wasn't on full O2 originally. Anyway, let's get back inside and uh, start slicing and dicing. Oh, there is a scanner. It's T. For some reason I thought it was tab. I think it was tab originally, but uh, don't hold me to that. Now tab, open and close the work orders, which technically no longer exist. Anyway, let's cut the head off. As I almost melt the laser cutter. Okay, so that's now off. the floor next so that way I have easy access to the barge just to yank everything like lights and all that fun stuff off can't get access to that one cut point so just yank off these chairs and 
and there we are. So I got seven minutes left and I have to start salvaging things, so. I should really focus on that, so let me cut through this glass plate. Or view screen as I guess it actually is. Okay, why didn't you cut all the way through? Are you free now? No. No, you are not. Alright, this is gonna get interesting. There we go. Alright, now the glass goes in the for uh, furnace. Just fire that off there and uh, give it a passing glance. Uh, that's been salvaged and now that there's a big hole in the very front I can just yank everything out the uh, front and just toss it into the uh, net okay something bounced off there well, that's just a random chunk of glass I didn't see I think a small chunk did actually get cut off separate from the rest of it. I wonder if it's actually still there. Uh, glass of memory serves isn't all that expensive, so I don't really much care about it. I just like tossing the large chunk into the uh, red maw. Okay. Alright, so... That's pretty much everything outside the front of the vessel, and if I had tethers, I'd be able to tether the, what I like to call the head uh, away from the rest of the vessel, cut off the cheek portions, and feed them to where they need to go. Sadly, I don't have tethers. Now, a good chunk of it did uh, shift slightly. So... I did cut off the floor in the main area, so I can technically go like this, yank this off this way, aim and then fire. Right, and apparently I gained... Reminder, asphyxiation can lead to missed salvage quotas. Right, and uh, as I was going to say, apparently I gained enough experience to move on to the next certification. But O2 is low, so I gotta get back to the hab. Because I can still salvage more stuff in three minutes. All right, now that the floor is gone, that's a light. I can just basically reach in with the grapple and just fire things off. Uh, wherever I need them to go. Salvage 
Salvage secured. Account credit applied. Am I glad the seats don't damage the suit? But apparently I reached one, uh, grade one of salvage, so... I'm assuming that means that they're making a profit off of this. Salvage secured. Credit deposited. Come on. There we are. At the spare food and water doesn't uh you know can't really do anything with it so that gets all fed to the furnace salvage deposit accepted credit transferred Just yank off these lights salvage secured Deposited. All right, and then we cut off the ceiling. See if I can get one of these uh, ceiling chunks into the blue maw in about a minute. So I can actually get both in. Okay, cool. And it's 10 seconds left. Okay, so I lost 8 equipment mounts because I do not have the ability to separate them off from the ceiling, so there's nothing to do there. I uh, did salvage... Uh, just shy, one kilogram shy of 1,600 kilograms of nanocarbon panel, and uh, one kilogram shy of 510 kilograms of titanium panel, uh, as well as four storage bins, three lights, uh, 60 kilograms of glass, six seats, two airlock consoles, uh, that's a door thing, two nacelles, and uh, three antennas for a gross total credits earned of... 629,911.25 uh, New certification level has been achieved. License level increased. Apparently I'm now flagged as a beginner. And I can get one handhold utility upgrade and class 3 ship class 3 certifications. But this ship isn't done and as we I'm looking at the stats coming from your bay, and it's looking like you're really going to make your way around here. It's time to learn about how to upgrade your equipment and some of the more advanced tools you'll soon have at your disposal. Head on over to the upgrade section of your employee terminal now. Okay, so I don't know if I could still be reading this if I skipped it or not when listening to Weaver. But uh, this new message states that uh, career progression clearance hazard level 3 has been attained. Congratulations, you're not qualified to handle electrical houses during salvage. Due to regulatory rollbacks introduced in 2299, linked salvage does not uh, do a preliminary exam of ships to disconnect potential electrical hazards. We believe our shipwreckers are well suited to handle such dangers, and the long term uh, time savings are highly beneficial. Uh, electrical components may arc when removed, impacted, or damaged, causing other objects to be electrified, including the shipwrecker themselves. This can cause damage to Link's spare and Link's equipment. 
Caution is advised. So basically, at uh, hazard level three, I get access to electrical equipment that can um, electrocute things. And I also get access to new ships. Uh, Hello Cutter, uh, great working, great working, reaching the next certification rank and clearing you for a new mackerel ship class. The Exolab will now show up in the ship catalog, and let me tell you, these are as amazing as they are dangerous. Tons of electronics in there, so make sure you're being cautious. Getting zapped ain't fun. Exolabs come with a bunch of cool exterior bits too. Robotic arms or radar dishes used to be for science, I guess. Pretty cool stuff. Links get some might ticked off if we damage those, so make sure you take extra care of them. Uh, wouldn't want to worry about your next before interview because you messed up a bunch of those. Anyway, uh, I'm sure it'll be a piece of cake for you to see in the bay, Weaver. And uh, that's his job number, much like we're Shipbreaker 9346-52. Okay. But uh, as I said, every... Uh, well, you do have 1.25 uh, billion credits to pay off. And um, Lynx being the benevolent for-profit corporation that it does assesses you with uh, daily fees so every time I go back to the hab to uh, end and uh, shift and start a new one I get assessed daily fees which is this entire breakdown here which includes interest on the debt uh, leasing of the workspace to actually work in uh, transport of the salvage cutting uh, rental for the various tools and uh, other equipment that I have including the helmet and the suit which keep us alive as well as rent for the hab as well and that comes to around 524,978.99 credits per day or yeah, per day so I have to make certain that every shift I salvage at least five, uh, over 500,000 uh, credits worth of stuff Otherwise, I'll be taking a loss, and the debt will increase instead of shrink. So, now I get to go to I'm equipment. I'm going to read this straight from the manual. Lynx rewards hard work and learning by giving shipbreakers access to tool improvements and new equipment. Reaching salvage goals is essential for becoming a master shipbreaker. Basically, they want to make sure you prove yourself first before giving you the big guns. Completing salvage goals will net you shiny Lynx tokens. Use those tokens here to get yourself some new gear. Sometimes there are some extra goodies in the rewards too. So let's get going and learn about one of the most important tools in a shipbreaker's toolbox, tethers. Go ahead and purchase them. Okay, so this is the equipment upgrade screen. So I have access to the grapple, uh, as well as the push, well, the push module for the grapple. And now I can unlock the tether module. So, exactly how many Lynx points does that take? I guess 150, so. I guess it says it right there. Have a quick read. Then hop back in the bay. Okay, so tools, tethers, an enhancement to the standard handheld utility grapple, the continuous Vander Wallace tether field system, uh, for simply or simply tethers, reduces the need for multiple shipbreakers to move a single heavy object. A versatile tool in the hands of skilled workers. Uh, the introduction of tethers led to the second greatest increase in salvaging efficiency in Link's history, only losing out to real protein breakfast meal discontinued in 2262. Tethers are easy and intuitive to use. Press and hold your grapple secondary trigger to place the first contact point. Drag the connection to another object and release the trigger to complete the connection. Tethers automatically attract to pull connected objects together. They can be used to pull objects into the processor, furnace, or barge for efficient and quick salvaging. Uh, how do I get out of this? There we are. Alright, now I don't believe I have any other li enough links points for anything else. 
Although I can look at it and I should point out the equipment also does degrade over use over time with use. Uh, so a lot of times the cutter and the grapple, the two most often used pieces of equipment, will degrade relatively quickly, whereas things like the thrusters, not so much. Although it is nice to see that the helmet and the suit no longer have uh, degradation, although the suit does have a health bar. And if you take damage to the suit, uh, you have a atmosphere breach and you basically suffocate. And each number here is based off the, uh, well, is to indicate the certification rank that you need in order to be able to unlock the, that uh, component. So durability drain one for the thrusters gets unlocked at um, certification rank nine, whereas purchasing thrusters is certification rank 27 and I can increase the speed at rank 7. And this is the cross spectrum scanner. Demo charges I don't actually get until, ag until uh, rank 11. Uh, and apparently requires 2,000 Lynx tokens, so... They don't let me have explosives until they know I'm not gonna just blow myself up. Apparently I'm still in training, so it says start training. Let me tell you how to use these things. Tethers are more powerful than the beam of your grapple, so they're great for moving super heavy salvage. Try it out. Press and hold the secondary input for the grapple to begin placement. Point where you want the salvage to move to, and then release it to create the tether. That's cool. They now actually give me a uh, tutorial on how things work, although they technically did that before, it was just literally on the job at the time. Great. Now, what if you want to get rid of the tethers you've placed? There's a cancel command you can send. But take note that it clears all the tethers you place. Go ahead and try it now. Okay, so T cancels the tethers. So if I do this, which didn't hit the target I wanted, I can just... Nope. Y cancels tethers. Yeah, there you go. Now you've got unlimited tethers during this training exercise. But after this, when you need more, You'll have to buy them from the kiosk. Let's see how well you can handle them now. Try to clear out a bunch of that scrap. You can stack multiple tethers on one object to increase the pull force. You can also chain objects of any size together to move them all as a group. I've seen some cutters do some incredible things with the daisy chain of tethers. Right, now I should point out tethers can't go through solid objects so when they flag red like that that means that they're some sort of interference and all right well done cutter looks like you know how to handle these things when you're ready let's go back to the half and continue with the death salvage secured credits deposited I just want to toss the rest of these things in and apparently I keep missing Seriously? Salvage deposit accepted. Credits transferred. How many of these training cubes are there? Salvage secured. Account credit applied. Just uh, yank that one over there. Salvage 
salvage secured. Account credit applied. And there we go. Everything's in the net. Near as I can tell. So I wonder if that means that I still have access to the ship that was in the bay. Or did it just instantly clear? Okay. Apparently that did flag as a new shift, so... Even though I made no salvage income, it still assessed me with fees. Not certain I like that. Not certain I get a choice. Apparently I get a new uh, sticker. I dub the Shipbreaker. Complete the tutorial. Okay then. And apparently I do not get access to the old ship that I had. Can't continue the salvage. Alright, well I guess the rest belongs to the uh, people in charge. So, if I look at the Grade 3 ships, I have, uh, looks like, one light cargo, one station hopper, and two exolabs. And it looks like the Pacific Myers-Smith has the highest total value, so I guess we go with that one. Although, good equipment. I mean, I don't think I have access to any other upgrades. Plus, it doesn't really tell me how many Lynx tokens I have, unless I'm selecting something. So, it looks like I only have 81, and... Yeah, I can't really get anything new and shiny. All right, okay, so the Pacific Myers Smith. So, claiming a new ship will clear the salvage bay of your existing ship. All remaining salvage will be forfeit to links. Begin salvage? I don't have much choice. I can't salvage the rest of the ship. Hey, Rook. Pinging you on a closed channel. If our crew ever gets to mingle face to face, we should crack some beers and share what we do when we get out of the red and start actually making profit from salvaging. Hard to figure when anyone's gonna hit that point though. Weaver's been at this 20 years, but he slipped back into dead things to foreman training. DT sends most of her money back home to New Manila. Transfer goes through links, of course, and the fees are huge. Kaito, well, he's a good person, uh, but just hasn't really taken to the work. He's been warned that he's a low earner. And me? I'm trying to get there as fast as I can. Once I hit zero, I'm gonna work maybe another year or two and just bank it all. All I want is enough to get one of those mining skips for belt running. Still so many rich rocks along the frontier line. Eventually hire some friends from back on the Iris platforms above Mars. So many good folks who just can't get work. Don't know when that'll be, though. Every time I think I'm earning at a steady clip, the company finds another fine or fee to slap on. Anyway, <laughs> I'll let you get back to it. Happy cutting. Woo, out. Yeah, so this strikes me as the kind of job that you don't actually ever not get out of debt on. I think I cut something I shouldn't have. Oh, well, not important. So the Xenolab is new, I've never messed with one of these before. It doesn't look like it's still attached anywhere. No, no, it's attached to the bottom. I guess that extra thing I cut on the first go was uh, a lower tether point that I missed on the second one. Alright, so now this should be free. 
And it goes to the processor. We'll just tether... We'll just tether that to itself, because... Targeting's still loopy. Anyway, away you go. And this is small enough, I can just fire it off that way. Object accepted for processing. Credit deposited. Alright, so we got these lower amplifiers next. So may I just cut it off there. And it looks like it can actually cut it here, but... Both these two pieces are just going to the barge, so I see very little reason to separate them. Salvage deposit accepted. Credits transferred. Let's basically cut it off the ship and send it flying. So the antenna base goes to the processor, and it's attached to something that goes to the processor. So I guess I just cut here, and send the high gain antenna uh, down. It's like something from the second amplifier sticking out of the net, so... So it doesn't look like you pop off, so... I mean, nah. But you go to the processor and you're attached to something that goes to the processor, so moot point. Meantime, there's still a second solar battery. So we'll just slice that off, tether you down. How do I get you off? I guess that way. Salvage secured. Credits deposited. There we go. Salvage secured. Account credit applied. I gotta remember that I don't have nearly enough tethers as I used to. I think I used like three, four, maybe five, and I'm down to six. And I keep thinking I have like 25, but no, that's the amount that I had before the reset. Salvage deposit accepted. Credit transferred. And I do like the fact that uh, the net no longer keeps things in the exact same position. Instead, it's like a force field and everything just goes into a massive uh, shelf, for lack of a better term. Oxygen level stabilizing. I think that's everything on the outside. What are you? I need just more nanocarbon. Now that everything outside is gone, I go inside. And work front to back, as I said. Try not to uh, cut through the computers. This memory serves, they are rather expensive. Both in terms of salvage and breaking. Okay, so now the head should be popped off. Or it should be disconnected now. And uh, there's now flight computers in the way of the glass. So what I'm going to do... cut the roof off and that kills that light because it's no longer technically connected to the ship uh, same with this floor what are you are you just a chunk of structure okay I should be able
Alright, can't pop the floor off. Why not? There's still a cut point on the outside, I think. Which is weird. Am I moving? Kind of. I think I'm more or less pushing the front of the ship away. I mean, I won't complain. Looks like it's actually caught on something. Alright, well, it's free now, so it doesn't matter. Tether supplies are low. Yeah, I got like five tethers left. Alright, now that that's free... I know I said front to back, but now these little computers take forever to salvage because there's like a bajillion of them. Alright, so I'm assuming that computer bounced off of whatever else was in the barge after it went into the barge. Right, now for the uh, power junction box, which is largely the bane of my existence. I'm just going to yank it out like this, and then tether it down because I don't want to deal with it. Because it does that every time. Account credit applied. Off the door. This goes to the processor. Where did the front of it go? Valuable object. Oh, there we are. Credit deposited. Cutter, there's five minutes remaining in this shift. Get in while the getting's good. We wrap. Okay, so that chunk uh, cut off this chunk of glass, but not the rest of it. So what did I miss? And how can I avoid cutting the things behind it? Here we go. Just let that bounce off the side and go into the uh, red maw. Oh, crud. Oh, it says like I'm running low on time, but no, that's the low O2 warning. pick up more fuel while I'm here. I'm still used to the fact that fuel uh, resets in between shifts. So I almost never actually had to buy fuel. And a lot of times with the more advanced vessels, or just the regular vessels, uh, you'd often find little goodies inside the uh, vessels themselves, and a lot of the time, they'd be more thruster fuel, so I never actually ever ran out. 
I keep smacking these computers on things. They keep sparking. This is a storage bin. I want the computer. And then we grab the chairs. So whatever this thing is, but that's the storage bin I grabbed. And it's now stuck. I'm just gonna grab this chair first. So that salvage bin went somewhere. Not quite certain where yet. I'll find it eventually. Meantime, the other three go into the barge. Salvage secured. Account credit applied. Stop. Salvage secured. Credits deposited. Okay, that should be everything in here. Apparently, while I'm at the uh, hazard level to deal with electrical and fire, apparently, I'm not high enough to deal with atmosphere yet, so I don't have to worry about atmospheric processors. Where did that salvage bingo? Storage bingo. Oh, there you are. Way with you. Salvage secured. Credits deposited. Alright, so that portion gets to the uh, blue maw. Once I realize I cut off, I didn't cut off all the cut points. I guess I deal with the rest later. Alright, so I lost 118 kilograms of nanocarbon from somewhere. Uh, Salvage all this fun stuff. So I made 1.2, just shy of 1.3 million credits. I get 20 Lynx tokens. Again, breakdown. I mean, I made twice the daily uh, amount, so progress is being made. I'm mean, gonna make the same amount uh, this shift, and I'll be below the 1.25 mark, uh, billion mark. I get a new sticker called "Crack One Open." Uh, Hero Cutter mentioned the word beer. I mean, I don't know why I would need a uh, coupon for that, a uh, sticker for that, but. Sure, why not? So it doesn't look like there's any new messages or anything like that, and I'm still too low to actually get new shiny equipment, but as you can see, all of my gear is starting to degrade as I use them. Uh, so the grapple's at 91, the other, well, the cutter and the thruster's at 96, the cross-spectrum scanner's at 98, demo charges are still at 100 because I don't have access to them yet because they won't let me play with explosives because I'm still too new. Yes, that's what I'm going with. Anyway, let's just continue. And I'm at where I'm left at. It looks like they actually refueled. How you holding up there, Cutter? Seems like you're getting a knack for it. Trust me, when you get well versed in the art of ship breaking, it becomes a joy to show up to the yard each day. Ain't a trade like it. Dancing between the ribs of a ship, spitting heat, dose it doing with a 10 ton panel. Taking a breather to gaze out at the rest of the human race buzzing in the distance. <laughs> Can you tell I'm 
I mean, I will admit, I would have said this before, but Weaver, uh, Weaver was still talking. Uh, I, I do enjoy the view. But uh, time is ticking down on the shift, and I have to chop the vessel in half. So, there's that. And I am below half fuel because, again, it didn't reset. Uh, so, although it looks like it refilled, it did not refill the O2. So... Have a nice day. Can I not get more gas? Have a nice day. That's weird. Welcome to Vendatron 9000. Have a nice day. Won't actually let me do anything. Guess I'm stuck with the fuel I got. Anyway, this thing should be separated already, so I just shove that into... Uh, the blue maw. And everything should be out, uh, out of the inside of the front part of the vessel. And my options are to be, and the vessel is comprised of both nanocarbon and aluminum. So the aluminum has to go into the furnace, and uh, the nanocarbon has to go into the processor. And it is mostly nanocarbon. There's also these lights out here that I keep forgetting because I don't really pay much attention to the lights. For instance, the little round ones, I don't actually bother salvaging because they're just too small and uh, not really worth in terms of amount. And I just realized the barge is clean. That is a new update. It used to be everything stayed in the barge until um, you were done salvaging the vessel and uh, opted to clear it. But as I said, most of the front part is made out of nanocarbon. So what little aluminum paneling there is usually is not worth the same amount as the nanocarbon. So I just toss the whole thing into the blue maw and take the hit on the uh, aluminum. Now for the rest. I'm also running low on fuel. Which will be a problem if I'm not paying attention. Okay, so I have no idea if there's anything still on the underside of this piece because I can't flip it around. And I just flipped it around and it doesn't look like there's anything under there, so we should be good. Alright, so let's see if I can actually order stuff from the Vendatron now. Or is it bugged? Because the fun of early access. Welcome to Vendatron 9000. Nope, I can't actually order anything, so... I have until the O2 runs out. That could have gone badly. Alright, so apparently there are these electric cables now. The cable junction. Out of range. That's not the right cut point. Cut you there. 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 So I'm assuming this just yanks off now, or All right, so I have to deal with the cable junction boxes. Apparently they don't come off. Do I have to cut this piece? Huh. Of course, it could also be this cut point that I have to worry about. What are you? Oh, you're a power cell. Just uh, yank you out, back it up, back it up, back it up, and uh, fling it into the net. Salvage secured. Credit deposited. Warning. Oxygen reserves are low. Okay, and since the Venetron won't do its thing, I guess the shift is over now.
Stop. Up. Welcome to Vendatron 9000. Have a nice day. So I guess I gotta end this shift early. Alright, so I lost 40 kilograms of glass, 62 kilograms of aluminum, 865 kilograms of aluminum paneling, and three lights, but gained uh, 1,530 kilograms of nanocarbon paneling, and 2,032 kilograms of nanocarbon. Also the power cell and two extra lights. This all came from the front of the vessel, so definitely worth more than what I lost. And because the Venetron wasn't doing its thing, I had to leave early, so I only made half the uh, daily fees. Alright, so again, there's nothing new, so let's try starting the salvage again. See if that changes anything. On the plus side, I now have more O2. Welcome to Venetron 9000. And that didn't change have anything. A nice day. Welcome to Venetron 9000. So how do I? Thank you for your purchase. Thank oh. you for your purchase. Fuel levels restored. Apparently, I don't click on anything, which is weird. You'd think that this mouse icon would show that uh, I can click on things, especially considering I could click on things before. Have a nice day. So now I should have paid extra money to basically refuel everything because the game's a nudge. And uh, now we should have enough air and thruster fuel and all that fun stuff to figure out why I can't get this part off. any fuel in here so oh there's another power cell interesting so since I cut off the entire side does that mean that it's now basically freestanding so if I tether you to one of the cattle drops up here the entire thing just going to go? The entire thing is just going to go. Just like that, okay. Alright, well since the airlock is now free, to the net with you. this other power cell. Hopefully it won't explode. And in you go. Salvage deposit accepted. Credit transferred. So these aren't classified as cut points and I can't just yank them off. We we'll have to cut them off. That was weird. I mean, it doesn't look like it. And I'm dealing with a bunch of electrical cables versus probably a uh, thousand kilograms of uh, several thousand kilograms of nanocarbon so it comes between a choice between the furnace and uh, the processor I know where this whole chunk is going to go and it's not going to be the red mall but since I can't seem to separate the two just 
Let's shove the entire side down the blue mall. Assuming, of course, it doesn't hit the storm break, which is the metal wall between the furnace and the processor. At least that's what I call it. I don't believe that's its official name, but then again, I don't think it has these as very much in the way of an official name, other than side of the work bay. Processing valuable objects. Credits awarded. Salvage games observed. Alright, so it looks like losing all that electrical cable isn't really uh, affect the salvage rating all that much, so guess what we're doing to the other side. Because until I have a way to separate the electrical cables from the uh, rest of the hull, I have to choose between what to salvage, and I will be going with what's more expensive. I will be yanking all these lights out, however. So I think that's it for the cut points. So this entire side will go to the blue mall. Tether supplies running low. Yeah, tether supplies are always running low. Just peel that clean off. Oxygen reserves are low. Reminder: asphyxiation can lead to missed salvage quotas. Okay, why can't I get more O2? Thank you for your Thank you for your stabilizing. And the answer is because I kept hitting the wrong button. Right, so it looks like the tethers broke there, but hopefully it's close enough to the blue maw that it's just going in. And it doesn't look like it's just going in, so we gotta help it along a little bit. Say, I did tether the thing, right? Used to be had the the uh, moss had their own gravitational pull, so anything that got within the front section, basically, past the yellow lines, would eventually just float into the moss, regardless of whether or not you wanted it in there. What are you? Oh, communications are right. Okay. Just uh, cut off the floor here, and the ceiling, try not to hit the computers. Alright, and much like the last bit, I can just simply with the floor gone, yank things off, but apparently not that because it actually is attached to cut points, but the computers I can just yank clean off the wall and uh, toss into the net. Ah, oh, this one went all sparky. Okay. Salvage secured. Credit 
positive. Alright, so we hit uh, tier 3 of the salvage, so I'm assuming that is what Lynx Corp flags as the maximum profitable uh, goal. So I hit that and uh, this salvage run is deemed profitable. But I still do have the rest of the ship to salvage. Credits deposited. And with that, the ceiling should be off, so send that to the mall. And the second compartment's now uh, done, so I move into the back section of it. And it doesn't look like there's much of anything here, so all I gotta do is just basically cut off the floor, the ceiling, and disconnect the back section from the uh, rest of the uh, hull. There. Move this over Found this way. Account credit applied. Valuable object process. Credit awarded. Your oxygen reserves are dropping below statistically profitable levels. Man, I miss having large O2, larger O2 tanks. Used to be I could work an entire 15 minute uh, shift uh, with only needing one refill. But that was then and this is, well, not then. Oxygen level stabilizing. Yeah, I'll pick up some more tethers while I'm here. Because I don't think there's enough left of the ship to warrant another salvage run. Or another uh, day's worth of salvage. I think the back end and the frame, which is all that's left, doesn't equate to uh, 500,000 worth of credits worth of salvage. And why are you still connected? You're not, you're just caught. Okay. That seems fair. Just fire you off this way. I would say the door controls I don't think have my, any health, but I'm fairly certain they're actually ridiculously fragile. Okay, so all that's left should be the frame, and I completely forgot one computer. This door. Which I don't think I can actually yank off anyway. And uh, then this comms array, which is actually uh, connected straight to the wall. So I actually have to hit the cut points without hitting the comma, right? And then you should just simply pop off. I toss you this way. 
And all that's left is the frame. One minute left, Cutter. Time to start wrapping things up. We wrap. Now, my plan was to just simply cut it in half and send it all into the Red Maw, but I don't have that kind of time right now, so... Just... Caution. Tether supplies are low. Empty a bunch of tethers and get it into the Red Maw. There we go. And that's it for the ship. I say what's that warning now, but uh, it's just the time. So I got less than 10 seconds left, but the Pacific Mars Smith is now gone. So it doesn't really matter. Okay, so I lost 86 kilograms of cable junction box, uh, 4x nanocarbon, I could have sworn that was measured in kilograms, 282 kilograms of electric cables, but again, I have no way of separating this off the nanocarbon, short of chopping it in half, and by then it's no longer electrical cables, 0 kilograms of aluminum panel, 55 kilograms of door, 8 lights, and 3 kilograms of structure, as well as one airlock console I completely missed. But I salvaged all of this stuff and ended up with 1.5 million, over 1.5 million credits. So I made out a bonus. Uh, I gained 1,240 mastery points. So I'm fairly certain that one more salvage like this and I should hit actually rank 5 or... Yeah, I'm 4 now, so I should hit rank 5 next. And I salvaged most of the ship, gaining... What do you say? 160 Lynx tokens and one repair kit. So I get one free repair kit, which means that I can repair one thing at no extra cost. Then let us continue. And then daily fees again, so... I definitely should have made back the fees associated with that one day of training where I didn't make any profit, and that one where the uh, terminal went all wonky. So I'm now at one million two hundred forty-nine. I'm sorry, one billion two hundred forty-nine million four hundred thirteen thousand six hundred ninety-six point nine two credits. I have two hundred forty-one links tokens, and nothing to spend it on. Alright, equipment is largely good. I don't usually repair objects until they get around like 75-50%, so around like the 70-60% uh, mark. That's when I consider repairing things, although I'll usually sometimes let them go if I'm not paying attention or it's not something I fix all that often. Uh, I'll let it go until around 50%, at which point I think it starts shorting out. So that's a good indication that the equipment needs repair. But since I didn't achieve a new rank, I don't think I have anything, uh, any other upgrades for the equipment to uh, gain. And since I now have, no longer have a ship uh, to salvage, I don't have anything to salvage. So I need to view a new ship and then select a new one for the, from the ship catalog. So uh, that's been interesting. Learned a little bit more of the... Uh, proceeded a little bit more into the storyline of the game and uh, met a few new people if you can say uh, listening to their voices over a comm link uh, meeting them uh, but apparently there are new characters in the game which is always fun but right now since I'm in between ships I feel that this is a good point to uh, end things off so I'm just going to call it here everybody stay safe from the plague and um have a good day.